Okay, welcome to Four Play Radio Sex Therapy. This is your host, sex therapist Lori Watson, and Dr. Adam Matthews, couples therapist. And we are going to talk about the G spot today. Lori, what have you gotten me into? <laughs> what you got me in a closet talking about G spots? <laughs> He's All backed right. against the wall. We should we should post a picture of you. He's like, oh my gosh. <laughs> well, we're gonna talk about all this stuff uh, talk about the g-spot okay let's <laughs> let's let's do it where let's do this where are they finding us first <laughs> on the way where are they where are they going to find this conversation about the, about the g-spot <laughs> that's right yeah so where is the g-spot is the first thing that i want to say and yeah. talk about where is it well can you tell me first though is it this uh i think for guys a lot maybe mm-hmm. for women too like, is this a real thing? Are we talking about, is this a myth? <laughs> is this like, is this the Loch Ness Monster? Like what? Yeah. What, what are we, is this a, we'll is this a real find thing? It. Is, now, yeah. I, no, it's a real thing. Okay. It's a real thing. I mean, the problem is, is you can't see it and it's not mm. in the exact same spot in every woman. Okay. And some women feel differently about it. Like they have different sensations. Mm. So I, I think there is this, is it really true? But it really is true. I mean, okay. there is a G spot. And it is directly, it's in her vagina, on the roof of her vagina, if she's lying on her back. Okay. Kind of right below her urethra, if you can imagine that. And it's actually a cluster of nerves that, when stimulated, sort of has an increase in terms of swelling. Mm. And if it's in the right spot, it feels very sexual. If it's the right spot that she's getting stimulated in, but it's too early in her arousal cycle, mm-hmm. it'll feel like she needs to urinate. Okay. So that can be you're there, you're in the good place, but it's like you're too early touching it. Okay. So that's what may make it confusing at times. Yes. For, for, yes. for men and for women, I would guess. For huh? both. Yeah. Yeah. They're like, oh, I don't know. Okay. You know, I don't know if there's anything there that is worth it. Yeah. But for a lot of women, they say it's a great place to be touched because they have a super orgasm from it or it increases their arousal or it okay. sort of does double time. You know, maybe they have stimulation in another way. And G-spot stimulation is also probably the way that women who can have orgasms with intercourse, they actually have a way that <clears throat> their angle is and the way he connects through intercourse. It's actually good G-spot connection G-spot stimulation. Mm. So that's something that couples can explore together, I'm guessing, to find out if it sounds like, I think sometimes it's presented as you either got it or you don't. If you had a G-spot, you would know it already or you would have found it or your partner would have found it. But what you're saying is no. this is going to take some work to, yeah. to find it or it takes some ex- exploration. Maybe not work, but exploration. Right. Yeah. Exactly. No, I I think a lot of people have just never experimented enough to figure it out. Hmm. I mean, I, I sit with couples every day, and I, I, I often ask them both, do you know where her G-spot is? And they both shake their heads, nope, mm-mm. I, I would say one in 20 people shake their heads yes on that. Okay. You know, like, yep, know where that is, know how to do that, yep, yep. I mean, but most people don't. Yeah. You know, they don't even know there's like another erogenous zone, you know, on a woman. Yeah. So how do couples begin to explore that? What do we begin to do to find the Mm G-spot? What do they do together? Well, I think that, you know, they don't want to do it clinically. They want to do it while they're making love. And certainly, basically him putting his fingers in her vagina. Fingers are a better way to reach the G-spot than intercourse. You know, Mm -hmm. I mean, it's just designed to be stimulated with fingers, kind of a come-hither motion. Uh Um, So it's about two inches into the vagina. That's about where it is, top of her vagina. And I think a man might feel a slight increase in terms of pressure. Some people say it's a little ridgy, but a lot of men say it doesn't feel any different than anything else in there, (laughs) you know? So they don't necessarily know other than her subjective response. So what are they, what are they looking for though, as far as touch? Like you mentioned that a little bit, but can you be more specific about that? Maybe the size, a slight engorgement, maybe the size of a quarter, between a quarter and a nickel. Yeah. Kind of that size. But a, a lot of men say, I don't ever feel that. I don't even know that. There's just kind of this soft place on the top of her vagina. So then it's partly then up to your partner to guide you on that. Absolutely. Right? For her to, to kind of Absolutely. let you know what she's feeling and, and where to go from there. Yeah. I think that 
again, it probably should happen sort of later on in the cycle. So it's not mm-hmm. like they just lay in bed and say, hey, well, let's, let's find your G spot. <laughs> find your G spot. Okay. Because right. so it, it, it might not feel good. It and shouldn't be the like, mission of the whole thing, right? Yeah. Okay. I, don't, I don't know where that is, yeah. she'll say. Are okay. you not? No, it's not there. I don't feel anything because right. she's not really aroused enough. Yeah. So, yeah. So that's going to be important, too, is that there's a level of arousal that happens before before, before you begin to explore, before right. you begin to see if you can find it. Right. Like I said, you know, early arousal stages, women feel the urgency to mm-hmm. urinate. So, again, right spot, wrong time. Later on, it's like her brain can translate it differently, and mm-hmm. her brain will translate it into sexual pleasure later on. Okay. So. Yeah, that's amazing. Yeah. That, uh, that's how, that, different. That's different. We're just so amazing. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> you know, sometimes women ask, if I wanted to have intercourse to have great G-spot simulation, what would I do? Mm-hmm. And there's there's kind of like two positions that work better, and that's her on top. These are also the positions that she climaxes with intercourse most easily. So her on top, like at a 45-degree angle, or maybe on her back kind of with her legs up. More than just her legs up, but her hips rocked back. So yeah. maybe hooked over his elbows or if okay. you're really young, his shoulders. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> really, <laughs> really, knowing, really young. I mean, knowing <laughs> where that is would it lead you to some positions where you can see how you would have to, to be able to hit it during intercourse. Mm-hmm. And you'd be up to be in a certain position to be right, able to and do it, that. It, it basically connects the, the penis better with the roof of the vagina. So it's not mm-hmm. like necessarily the tip of the you know penis is hitting it that's never going to happen because it's too shallow in the vagina Mm -hmm. but it's just more of a connection so what else is important to know about the g-spot lori well i think that for a lot of women who have trouble orgasming this can be a secondary route Um, maybe Mm -hmm. they can't quite quite get there or they get distracted and then they can't reach orgasm. And so G-spot stimulation is almost a way to distract them. You know, their partner could do both, clitoral stimulation and G-spot stimulation. And there's sort of like so many things going on at once that she can't quite focus, which is good Mm -hmm. because she can just feel. And once she starts feeling, she doesn't, um, she's not overthinking it. Okay. Yeah. So that's kind of helping them be in the moment. Is that the same thing? It does. It's It's physiological. I think that women tend to watch themselves in terms of, am I getting there? And this this makes it hard for them to figure out exactly what their partner is doing. They can't synthesize, mm-hmm. you know, these two things at once, the G-spot stimulation and the clitoral stimulation. Yeah. And a lot of women say that's the best orgasm is both at once, that that gives them the most powerful orgasm. So that's definitely something fun to try. Uh, you know, also maybe a, a toy that is designed for G-spot stimulation, there's some out there that are kind of curved, and that works really well for some women. You know, if they're not inhibited by that sort of thing, that would be great. Yeah, so that I like that idea of it being your partner being more present in the act and in the moment that that doesn't have to think about it all the time or think or kind of monitor their sexual progress. That makes sense why that orgasm is not just from a bi- physiological sense, but also just from a psychological. psychological sense that you are able to be more present. And I'm guessing that that also makes it more enjoyable for the man as well. That Sure. That, Anytime that, she happened. gets lost in herself, I think, and enters the experience, I think oftentimes men say, that's it. You know, that's what he's waiting for her to kind of get lost in it. Mm-hmm. And it's exciting. It's kind of like hitting the bell or something when she has a big orgasm. They love that. But again, we don't want them to become performance oriented. <laughs> that's, that's they right. just want them to explore the cave. <laughs> you know, right. Do something fun. <laughs> that's <laughs> do right. something Ex- fun. Exploration in and of itself is <laughs> right. good. Fun. Well, we'll be right back. You're listening to Foreplay Radio Sex Therapy with your host, sex therapist Lori Watson, and my co host, Dr. Adam Matthews, couples therapist. We'll be right back. Wanting Sex Again, How to Rediscover Desire and Heal a Sexless Marriage by Certified Sex Therapist Lori Watson. 
Each chapter is designed to fix one of the problems that cause low libido, from early marriage through the childbearing years, even all the way through menopause. I've also had men read it and tell me that for them, it was the most hopeful thing they read about resolving sexual problems. Look for Wanting Sex Again on Amazon.com. You can also talk to Lori Watson for therapy in person or via Skype. I offer couples counseling and sex therapy, and I think about both aspects of the relationship, emotional intimacy and sexual technique and that combination together helps marriages be happy improve your sex and improve your relationship with awakening center for couples and intimacy find out more at awakenloveandsex.com and sign up for their next couples retreat weekend hosted by Lori watson awakenloveandsex.com awaken what's possible Okay, you're back with Foreplay Radio Sex Therapy and your host, Lori Watson, sex therapist, and Dr. Adam Matthews, couples therapist. And we are talking about the G spot. Yeah. All and right. that there really is a G spot. There really is one. It's not a myth. Like you really can be found. Yes, right? and it can feel really good for her. Yeah, and I think that's something that we were talking about off air um, that seems obvious but maybe we just need to say it this is a good thing everybody <laughs> this is a good thing that there that there is a G spot men it's a good thing you can find it we can you can get there and it's going to pay off it's going to yeah. have big dividends right right because it can really increase her orgasm the power of her orgasm yeah and when you do find it when you take the time to to do this then all right sex afterwards becomes that much better yeah right? super super great yeah. yeah, I think that one thing I would like people to stay away from is kind of this this compulsion to perform. You know, yeah. oh, they they got to find it or they got to prove something. You know, if she doesn't have a sensation that she's saying is super great, well, it's just because he hasn't found it and there's a sense of failure or yeah. she's not open. I mean, you know, or, sex should feel good. It's like there should be some relaxed pleasure in these things, not – some quest that, even though I was kidding about that, but, you know, some quest that says you're, you're great if you know where the G-spot is and can yeah. find it every time. Yeah, that's the that's the myth for men, I think, that if you're a good lover, then you know how to find your G-spot yeah. every time. Yeah, or right? you know that there is a G-spot. You know that there is a, you know that there is a G-spot, yeah. <laughs> now they know. Now you know. <laughs> now they the know. The more you know. You know, I think, too, G-spot stimulation can be a precursor to women's ejaculation. Okay. So sometimes they try that. And that probably more than anything, I think we need to talk about this again, another podcast. But, you know, sometimes the roof of the vagina does kind of stimulate her for urgency. And there is a sense that with a certain amount of vasocongestion and buildup, that she could have a little bit of liquid come out, and that's an ejaculation. It might not be quite as much as what you see on the erotic films or the porn where, you know, there's this whole gush. Mm. But sometimes uh, women, you know, say that if they want to try that, they want to get there, that that G-spot stimulation is the way to it. Yeah. What you're saying is we're not going to pursue that, though, right? Like that's not going to be the basis of what our performance is? Um, I think that if they want to go for that, that's fun. But I I don't think that they should necessarily feel inadequate if they don't ejaculate. And neither should he. Yeah. You know, like, oh, I don't have somebody that does. And therefore, she's not really experiencing all that she could experience. That's not true. Some women just don't ejaculate. Yeah. Whereas all women do have the G-spot. But... Some women just subjectively don't feel as much pleasure there as other women. That's an important track along the same lines that we were just talking about, too, of not wanting this to be performance-based, which seems to be an important note that it's different for the sensitivity is different for all women. Yes, yes. yes. Yeah. I mean, and everything is different for every man and every woman. I mean, some women, even though we talk a lot about how the clitoris is kind of the center of her sexual universe, for some women, it's too sensitive. Mm. You know, they don't want to be touched there. You, you really got to listen to each other in terms of what feels good. There's also some studies that say if the G-spot is stimulated in labor, it increases her pain tolerance. Mm. Although I, I honestly cannot personally fathom that. Me yeah, neither. I just, <laughs> <laughs> I Having I had can't, children, can't, no. Yeah. I mean, I think that's the last thing you want when you're in labor. Just don't, don't mess with me. <laughs> Especially don't mess with me there. <laughs> leave me alone. <laughs> yeah, leave right. me alone. That yeah, just, okay. I think that 
that's not something to try unless it were specific and planned yeah. and both parties really wanted that. Yeah. Well, as what we're saying is if it's not as sensitive for your partner or for you as a woman, what do we do? Like, is there a way to still have that kind of, I mean, we we labeled it a super orgasm earlier. Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. how does that play into your relationship when it's obviously, I would think that people would want super orgasms. Right? Yeah, and maybe she already has super orgasms. Okay. You know, so it, it isn't like this is, you know, puts her over the top. Maybe it's just, it is one method that mm-hmm. women report that they have essentially better arousal, but it isn't the only way. And she may like it the other way. You know, mm-hmm. I think listening to her really carefully, that's the relational component. That's what we, they need to do. But this is something that I think is a new erogenous zone that some people don't discover and don't use mm-hmm. as a way to further her pleasure. Yeah. So it shouldn't be taken as an or seen as something that you're never going to have a great orgasm if you if right. your G spot isn't as sensitive right. as right. somebody else's. No, yeah. no, absolutely not. Well, it's been great talking about the G spot yeah. with Dr. Adam Matthews, couples therapist, and I'm Lori Watson, sex therapist. Thank you so much for listening. We'd love to hear your comments and questions on foreplayrst.com, or you can find us on iTunes and Stitcher. See you next time. Hey, help us stay on top here at Foreplay. We'd love it if you would subscribe and share it with your friends. And please take one sec and rate and review us. Thanks so much.